This is WYMT Mountain News at 5.30. Good evening, I'm Steve Hensley. And I'm Olivia Calfee. Strong to severe storms are possible into the overnight hours. Meteorologist Cameron Aaron has the latest on this first alert weather day. Cameron? Yeah, guys, we are watching out for some showers this evening, but no severe weather across the mountains right now. That's the good news, but that could change as we go later on into tonight. Here's a live look at the radar. As you can see, a few showers mainly over the Big Sandy at this hour, moving into portions of southern Floyd County, also into Pike County as well. So just a heads up in Pikeville, a few showers are possible over the next few minutes. Also watching out for some heavier showers now in Lawrence County, also in Martin County as well. And this will this will continue pushing off into West Virginia over the next few minutes. We do have a new severe thunderstorm watch for portions of western Kentucky, and I'm highlighting this because whatever forms here is going to move east into our region as we go into tonight. So not that first round wasn't the end of this. We still have another round to go as we go further on into tonight, also into Tuesday morning. A level one risk of severe weather in place for most of the region, a level two risk for our western and northern counties. Those full details coming up on in in just a few minutes on what we can expect as we go into tonight. All right, Cameron, thank you. A school nurse at Rise STEM Academy for girls in Lexington was killed Saturday night in what police are calling a hit and run. 60 year old Lynette Lane spent four decades in health care. Mariah Congito shares how she is being remembered. The students would see her beyond needing the medical services. They would come in just to be greeted and talk to her, give her a hug. Lynette Lane was a school nurse at Rye STEM Academy for Girls for the last two years. This position is employed by the Fayette County Health Department, who shares what she meant to those who had the pleasure of knowing her. It is a great loss. It is something that our staff is really feeling this morning. There have been, I've seen several school health members already in tears. Paul says she was dedicated to her job and was an example of just how important a school nurse is. They are some of the only people in health care that these kids will connect to. The director of Rise STEM Academy for Girls shared a message to the families. In it, it says, we are heartbroken by this devastating loss for our school and community. It goes on to say her unwavering commitment and caring approach have earned her the respect and admiration of staff, students, and families alike. We are sad for the schools, we are sad for those kids, but mostly we're sad for the family. Paul says they met with Lane's husband, who shared more stories about Lynette as he mourns her loss. He shared stories about her love and what she was doing this weekend and getting a pool ready for kids and talking about buying food and grilling food. And it's just this is a reminder of how fragile life is and to spend the time with those that mean something to you. Paul says one of the family's biggest concerns right now is finding out what happened. As of now, police are still looking for the person responsible. Mariah Congito, WKYT. The school says grief counselors were on hand today. Immigration and Customs Enforcement has placed a detainer on the former University of California Davis student charged in a series of recent deadly stabbings. An ICE official says the agency is, requiring, is requesting Carlos Dominguez be transferred into their custody should he be released by the Yolo County Sheriff's Office. Dominguez is charged with two counts of murder and one count of attempted murder for three stabbing attacks that terrorized the California college town during the span of a week. Two men died in separate incidents and a woman suffered critical injuries in a third. Dominguez entered a not guilty plea when he was arraigned on those charges last week. Investigators are looking into whether the shooter in this past weekend's deadly mass shooting at an outlet mall outside Dallas had links to a neo-Nazi group. The gunman killed eight people and injured seven others Saturday afternoon before a police officer killed him. CBS's Omar Biafranca reports from Allen, Texas. Mourners in Allen, Texas stopped by the growing memorial to the victims of this weekend's mass shooting. Dozens of shots rang out at the busy outlet mall near Dallas on Saturday. When I started to hear the rapid fire, the nonstop fire, that's when I knew it was real. Joshua Barnwell was shopping for new jeans when the gunfire started. He rushed to help the victims. There were so many injuries, I couldn't even come close to compress every area. Would you want to talk to the people that you help? I would, and not, again, not for any glad handing. I would just want to see them and let them know that um, I'm glad they're here. I really am. 
Law enforcement sources tell CBS News the shooter seen here in dash cam video we've frozen was wearing body armor and was heavily armed. Police say he was killed by an officer who happened to be at the mall. Two law enforcement sources tell CBS News that the shooter had a patch on his clothing that said RWDS. They believe that stands for right wing death squad associated with extremist right wing neo-Nazi groups. An army spokesperson says the shooting suspect joined the service in 2008, but never completed basic training. An army official tells CBS News his separation three months later was because of physical or mental conditions. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Allen, Texas. Authorities have not provided details about the victims yet, but the family of 20-year-old Christian LaCour identified him as one of the victims. He was working as a security guard at the mall. Police in Brownsville, Texas, have charged a man in connection with the deadly crash Sunday outside a migrant center. Eight people died and 10 others were critically injured. CBS's Nicole Skanga has the latest from Brownsville. The driver of a Range Rover that plowed into a group of migrants at a bus stop in Brownsville, Texas, Sunday morning, now faces manslaughter charges. Through the investigation, it was found that the SUV ran a red light, lost control, flipped on its side, and struck a total of 18 individuals. The chief says 34-year-old George Alvarez attempted to run from the scene, but bystanders held him down until police arrived. Investigators are awaiting a toxicology report and looking at whether the crash was intentional. George Alvarez is a Bronzo local with an extensive rap sheet. He has been formally charged and arraigned with eight counts of manslaughter, 10 counts of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. This migrant, Luis, was traveling with the victims, many from Venezuela. He said they were at the bus stop waiting for a ride to the airport when they saw the SUV barreling toward them. The witness said the SUV driver was yelling profanities at the crowd as he accelerated. They were coming at about 60 miles per hour, and when they saw all of us migrants standing there, they accelerated. I can't say how fast, but they accelerated and ran us all over. On Sunday night, the community held a mass to honor the victims. Police say the suspect is not cooperating with the investigation. Nicole Skanga, CBS News, Brownsville, Texas. The suspect is being held on a $3.6 million bond. The police chief says he could face more charges as the investigation unfolds. Brownsville, just a few miles from the southern border, has seen a sharp increase in the number of migrants coming into the city. Taiwan is in talks with the United States about a $500 million military aid package following delays in deliveries for much-needed weapons. South Korea's defense minister says the military package is not counted into previous arms sales. Since last year, Taiwan has been complaining of delays in the delivery of weapons purchased from the U.S. Under the presidential drawdown authority, President Biden can transfer arms and services from U.S. stockpiles without congressional approval during an emergency.